Hello, it's JP. How are you today? Another time, another day to talk about the power of God. That's a, a passion of mine. It's something that we don't hear a lot. We don't hear preachers talking about the power. We hear about the love. We hear about a lot of other things. But the absolute power of God that we see in the Bible, incidences that are just shown through Elijah, through Elisha, through Jesus, all of them, they, they talk about it, but we seem to gloss over it because I can't tell you why. If I said because and I gave you a reason, I don't know what they're thinking, but it seems like no one's thinking about the power of God in the sense of, is it still available today? Is it still real today? And you listen to sermons and we talk about the power in a way that is not like often what we see in the Bible. The miracles, the signs, the wonders. Those things are so much a part of God. And they, ha they happen then. And a lot of people think they've discontinued today, and that's not true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, this is the prophetic. And the prophetic is still alive today as it was back in the day of Isaiah, as it was a thousand years before the time of Jesus. And as we read the New Testament, we see that Jesus will often say, as the scripture said, this will come to pass, and it did and it's been fulfilled. And you'll see that 351 times in the Old Testament, Jesus was prophesied to come. And he did come and he did fulfill those, those prophecies. 351 of them, some of them in Isaiah, are so obviously real because it, they, the things came to pass, as they said, they gambled for his clothing. He went up on a cross. He was, there were so many things that took place in his destruction, or what they thought was going to be his destruction. And it was all forecast. And it's something that I think everyone needs to really go back and read. And um, you can look it, on, it up on, you know, Google it, or you could go through your Bible and just get a Thompson Chain Bible about the prophecies of the Bible, and it'll tell you the main ones of which there's probably 60 or 50. And but, but the thing of it is, is when you read the prophetic and it comes true, what does it do? It instills faith. And faith is where the origin of power begins. It's our faith in Jesus Christ. It's the power of his name. He said, whatever you pray in my name, it will come to pass. However, where is your faith at? If you have the faith, you can pray and you can command a mountain to move and it will. And everybody takes that in just in the course of reading. And I don't think we really ponder it, that there is a deeper place to go with God a deeper place of relationship. That's what Jesus was trying to teach us, was that there's a deep place to be with God. And he would go and he would pray. And he said, I only do that, which I see my Father in heaven do. So as you see me, so you see the Father in heaven. How could he say that? It's because of his prayer life and because of the way he sought after his Father. He was here on earth. He was human. And he, was, he had to communicate with his dad somehow, his father. He had to commu communicate with him somehow, and he did. And he did it by prayer, and he tried to teach us. And it's in the Bible. If you read what Jesus instructs you to do, and if you're, if, if you're dedicated to it, there will be a release of power in your life. So that's what I want to share with you about. This fellow's name was, is, uh, well, actually it was, he's passed away, it's Kim Clement. And Kim was a prophet, a modern day prophet. And the things that the Lord showed him, I believe, came to pass. But the thing about Kim was, is that he had a revelation of God. He was a, um, 
concert pianist. He was from South Africa and he got uh, involved with rock and roll and he became a heroin addict, had his overdose, almost died, had a revelation of God, and then he pursued. But that's the key word. He pursued. That's what we need to do. That's what happened in my life. I pursued and things did happen. But this is not about me right now. And it's never about me. It's about what God wants to do through you. But the thing is, is that you have to understand what the pursuit of God involves. Going to church on Sunday and hearing some good messages is part of it. But there's more to it. And we're going to go to that place and we're going to, and we're going to see it. And then you're going to envision it for your own life. That's what happened to me. I learned the truth through my pastor. And as I heard the truth, then I had to make a plan. A plan for me to get closer to God. To, to change my life was first thing. And I knew that the power of God could change my life. That he could take away a spirit of fear. He could take away anxiety. He could put peace in our heart. He could put our burdens upon him. But you have to learn how to do that. And that's what we're talking about today. So Kim Clement was from South Africa, rock and roller, heroin addict, and he sees and understands the power of God. And he pursues it with all his mind, heart, soul, and strength, which the Bible tells us to do. And what happened? He found God and God empowered him. And Kim would go to uh, different churches and where, the, where there was charismatic worship, he was able to prophesy. And back in 2007, he was able to prophesy certain things about the uh, election of 2016, which he didn't really all know what he was prophesying because it was so far in advance, nine years. So he was just, he would play his piano with the, with the uh, rest of the group and when the lead worship and then the spirit of the Lord would come on him and he would share. And what he did was say in the year 2007, now I'm going to read, for what I wrote. In 2007, Kim Clement prophesied, I will put at your helm for two years a president that will pray. That is something that the Lord put on his heart. And we go on to see that he says, one of the most talked about prophecies on YouTube was viewed by 1.2 million people. That is what happened, is that people took videos of Kim and he would pronounce these things and they caught it on, on video, which means you will be able to look up what I'm talking about, K-I-M Clement, C-L-E-M-E-N-T. Look up and watch his videos and you'll be astounded. And so it was in 2007 in Redding, California, and he said, Trump shall be a trumpet. That was in 2007, Trump. I'm not sure a South African even really knew much about Trump, if anything. So then he goes on during this worship service and he says, God says, I will put at your helm for two terms, a president that will pray. Two terms, a president that will pray. Then he went on to say, there will be a praying president, not a religious one, for I will fool the people, says the Lord. I will fool the people. Yes, I will, says God. The one that is chosen shall go in and they shall say, he has hot blood. For the Spirit of God says, yes, he may have hot blood, but he will bring the walls of protection on this country in a greater way and the economy of this country shall change rapidly, says the Lord of hosts. Listen to the word of God, of God. He says, I will put at your helm for two terms a president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. Then he goes on to say, I have searched for a man 
who will stand in the Oval Office and pray for the restoration of the fortunes of Zion, Israel. Watch how I change everything, for there shall be those who are in justice, and, that, and there are those who are in a strong position in the highest court in the land. The highest court in the land, the Supreme Court, too shall step down for the embarrassment of what shall take place. But I wish to place in the highest court in the land righteousness, and they shall attempt to put others into reach their endeavors. But God says, hear me tonight, hear me today. I have this whole thing planned out according to my will. This man will throttle the enemies of Israel. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And there are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many, many politicians in this nation. There will be a shaking amongst, there will be a shaking amongst the Democrats in the upcoming elections, but unsettling for the Republicans. And then there is a nation. He showed me. He took me itching for a new kind of war with America. They will shout impeach. Impeach, they say. But nay, this nation shall come very suddenly. But it shall not come in the time of President Obama. I shall come when this new one arises. My David that I have set aside for this nation. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this will not happen. Once you recognize the man that I have raised up, pray, for the enemy will do everything in its power to put a witch in the White House. For Jezebel has chased away the prophets, and even Elijah, now I have said, go back. For this shall be dismantled so that there will be no more corruption in the White House. Unfortunately, Kim suffered a stroke in 2015. He passed away in November 2016, the same month that Trump was elected. So as you heard this and you heard my dog respond to the dog across the street, um, sorry about that. I hope you heard everything. But you can see, the only thing that really hasn't come to pass is the second term. And we might soon hear a, an announcement of a pursuit in 2024. So, my friends, what I'm trying to tell you, I could talk about these things in here and, and align them with things that have taken place. But uh, I apologize again for my dog, but I hope you heard it because it was all factual. God worked through this man. He gave us a message, and there's a, supposed to be a second term. That's the only thing that hasn't come from these words that were spoken through him. So what I'm trying to get at is stay in touch. Understand that there is power in Christianity. There is power in the living God, and he wants you to share in that power. And this is an example of it. There is amazing things that God wants to do through you. There will be things that I tell you about, prophecies about terrorism that the Lord showed me that came true, things about the Middle East. And it, I can't take credit for it. It was always God. And that's what I'm trying to help you see. There is more to your faith than just going to church on Sunday. There is more in the Bible. It's real, cover to cover. Read it, understand it. God will reveal himself, his character to you through it. And then pray and keep praying. And eventually God will respond to your prayers and you'll be stunned because he did the mine and he did the Kims and he did the other people who prayed. So I hope you're encouraged. I apologize for the, one more time for this little guy. He, he just, he's on patrol. He hears something going on outside. That's his job. He jumps up on this chair usually 
looks over here like this, sees what's going on outside, and lets them know he's the king of this house. You might have thought it was me, but no. It's this little guy who one day I'll show him to you. He's only 16 pounds, but he's got a lot of, a lot of giddy up. So thanks for watching. I hope this blessed you. Press in, get to know him, and I guarantee he wants to get to know you in a way you never thought possible. Okay? Have a great day. Take care.